So, um, yeah, this is a rather unusual video I'm I'm doing here. It's uh, it's in a way in a reaction video and kind of try to explain my train of thought. Um, I recently, a few months ago, you could say, um, posted on Deviant Twitter and. Facebook picture of my version of Godzilla, uh, as you can see here. That's my my picture, and uh, I got a lot of positive feedback. Quite a few people liked it, um, but I kind of expected this. But I also got a lot of negative feedback. Um, even even some some razor hateful comments you might say, <laughs> and I just wanted to to address some of these points. Um, not because re I really feel like I, I need to justify myself, but because I I think the topic overall is is razor interesting, um, and is a good way to discuss certain certain aspects of internet culture and the way we treat pop culture overall. Um, so let's go into it. Um, in the description of my picture on, on DeviantArt I explained I'm, I'm not really a fan of kaijus, of giant monsters um, in general. Uh, for, for me most of them are Razor boring in design, most of the time, and um, yeah, they, they they don't really give me the same kind of joy I get from other stuff. This is a completely personal um, view, and uh, I, I actually wrote there that I I don't watch monster movies. Or kaiju movies. Monsters can be a lot of things, but kaiju movies in spe specifically. Um, and people called me out and said, "Hey, how how do you want to know um, if you don't like them? If you don't know them, I actually know them. I should say that I I know these movies. Um, I have seen lots of clips and sometimes read about them because it's it can be interesting for my own." artistic research and everything um, to look at these things also from an aesthetic point of view but uh, the films themselves they they don't really um, work for me um, and I, I made a quite a few of claims in in that description and uh, also afterwards in the comments um, but also these negative comments made made quite a few of claims about me. So uh, let's let's dive into it. Overall, I think the reason I I try to show Godzilla in a very new and fresh way is that um, I I think the the overall design. Is razor boring, uh, or razor has become boring to me. Um, although there there is quite a bit of change in Godzilla over the years, it never really challenges the viewer. Um, it's it's never too far from that what you expect. And as an as an artist, as a um, speculative evolution artist and as a paleo artist I like to challenge um, the expectations of my audience whatever that audience is um, so that was one of the points the other point was that I wanted to create something that could be believable um, and there are numerous takes on a Realistic Godzilla that have been done before, however, I think not in in this way 
as I did here. I will not really go into detail what I did here with, with Godzilla, um, but it's the animal is not uh, far from being as large as the newest version, for sure. This creature is maybe just a little bit smaller than the original um, Godzilla, and it's much slower. It wouldn't be able to walk on land. Um, yeah, so it's an overall quite distinct um, creature. But I still try to incorporate certain parts of of the lore um, of the monsterverse into this. So I I just I didn't just made something up and called it Godzilla. I had something in mind when I did this. You know. Um, and I, I, I was called out for, for doing this in the name of realism, really. But um, that too, realism is important for me, or not re really realism, but um, credibility. Creating something that would be possible, would be doable, is something that is for me extremely satisfying. Um, that's That was one of the the main points um, and of course that I wanted to to create something with this that is uh, certainly different from what you're used to um, yeah then I I show, I show people said they oh he he comes from a paleo art background so so of course he would go down this route but that's not how you would would do a kaiju and everything and um, sure from the point of a of a fan or a movie person that's surely not how you design a kaiju but that wasn't the point I wanted to make I really I, I didn't want to to make a a classic kaiju that's that wasn't <laughs> my intent and I think what we see here something that I observe very often also in paleo art is that these people have a very strong emotional attachment to the original designs uh, or the original design space you could say because of course every, every Godzilla in every movie they, they, they are always a little bit different but they, they occupy this morpho space you could say um, but as a paleo artist I I'm trained in constantly um, questioning my own beliefs and uh, adjusting to a new scientific reality. And um, that's not what a kaiju fan, of course, has to do, usually. Um, and I think that was one of the reasons, for example, why Roland Emmerich's uh, Godzilla failed, because it it occupied um, in the Morpho space a point that was far outside what the, the Godzilla fan was used to. And of course, the, the animal there is portrayed in a different way. It's it's a mother suddenly and. Uh, it's radioactive, but that's not really that important. It doesn't have this atomic breath and something like that. Um, so, so Roland Emmerich tried something similar, actually, to mine. I, I had never really a problem with, with his design, except for certain aspects of the anatomy of, of this creature that don't really work that well. Um, like like the way to thin ankles and stuff like that, but uh, I'm 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 straying from the point. But yes, there is a strong emotional attachment, um, and you see it for ex I see very similar stuff with with the fanboys um, fan base not fanboys sorry uh, of of Jurassic Park for example or Jurassic World. Um, there's this deep longing and appreciation for the original designs. You know the the designs that got you hooked for something and um, sure um, I'm okay with that if, if you are okay with that um, but as a paleo artist that's that's not the way we work 
if you are that inflexible as a paleo artist you you will not last long i can tell you that um you you have to constantly adjust and discuss and um be open to critique and things like that um so i'm i as a paleo artist at ye at least you should grow a very thick skin um when it comes to these things uh that's why i I'm also not really <laughs> bothered by this critique. I, I just think it's it's humorous and interesting to talk about this. Um, also, some people said I would hate kaijus. That's not really the thing. I just don't like them. Uh, buh, buh, buh. What else? Oh, yeah, consistency. Um, some people said I, I wouldn't really get the point of Godzilla. You know, it's this, it's a character, not a creature. It's a... It's a force of nature, not just an animal. And no, no, really, I I get that. I totally get that. Um, it's just that this isn't important for me. And I think with what I did here, you could very much do um, a similar movie to, to a Godzilla movie. Certainly not what you would expect, but uh, certain elements still be there and you would add more to it you know um, I, as a as a world builder i'm i'm striving for the non-conventional in a way the non-conventional but possible or plausible um and this uh that was one of the reasons why i tried this in the first place i mean to to do something different um and of course uh, there's when you look at the monster verse the, the the greater monster verse they also the, the consistency is only vaguely there i mean as i said there is this morpho space you could call godzilla but the design changes constantly i mean it changes size and form and everything and of course the technology is getting better and better and you have more details or less details and um, depending on, on what technology is used like a high detail suit or a, a high detail CG model and everything um, but there is a consistency isn't as in stone written as you you would think there is quite a bit of wiggle room and also the role Godzilla plays change change quite dramatically i would say it isn't is it is no longer the post world war 2 fear of nuclear war that godzilla represents that was basically only the first movie <laughs> and after that it shifted gradually more and more to so to, to something like Oh, Godzilla is now one of the good guys and he's on, on the side of the humans and fights the other monsters. Or Godzilla is an uh, allegory for pollution and climate change and stuff like that. Uh, which is completely uh, 180 degree <laughs> turnaround, I mean. <laughs> you know, it's uh, sure, it's still a force of nature, but um, it's, it's no longer really evil, for example. Uh, it's it's uh, kind of uh, banana. <laughs> it's one of the good guys. That's yeah. English is hard. Speaking is hard. Um, yeah. Uh, something I I think the last thing I want to address is that uh, I think I actually said that, but I was quoted on this. I saw somewhere that I if I would make a film on Godzilla, I would make it deliberately in a way that. Um, the fan base would hate it. I have to say, I, I think I actually said that. I can't really remember. And it might have been a little bit in the heat of the discussion. Um, but it was... Actually, you, you have to understand it more as, as a kind of satire. Um, I, I wouldn't make a movie just uh, with Godzilla in a way that... Uh, only so that good, uh, kaiju fans would hate it. But you can be sure if I had the budget and the, um, and the film crew and everything and the technology, I would certainly do 
um, a kaiju, a Godzilla movie that isn't targeted at the kaiju fan base. So uh, a Godzilla f a movie without the fan base in mind, because that's just not important for me. I don't want to, I don't want to make um, art or a movie to please someone, to please a fan base. I want to make it in a way that it pleases me. And um, oh yeah, some a few people also said that that I'm I'm very disrespectful against the against the kaiju fan base. This makes me kind of laugh. I I, I mean, <laughs> come on, guys, <laughs> being disrespectful for for a creature that is completely fictional and and everything. I I mean. There has been so much worse disrespectful stuff against any kind of fan base before I mean, <laughs> um, it's it's not like I I just make anything and call it uh, Godzilla. I mean I could also do that. I could just make uh, just take a small lizard, maybe fifty centimeters long and make it the color scheme of Godzilla, but anything else is just a small lizard and then call it Godzilla. Could also do that. I didn't do that. You know, I, I still try to incorporate some of the lore into this. <laughs> um, and I feel like this is, this is just a little bit silly. Um, I, I hope at least that nobody is really hurt by my artwork. You know, um, that somebody looks at this and is like, oh no, what have you done? How, look how they massacred my boy. <laughs> Sorry for the memes, but yeah. <laughs> I think this is everything I I wanted to say. Um, this concludes this little video. And please let me know what you think, negative or positive. And please don't bash on, on the people that critique me. So it's reserved to me. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I, you know, as a paleo artist, I, I grew, as I said, I, I, I you grow a quite thick skin. And I often just sit back, relax and enjoy the show when I see such discussions at at this point of time, because um, they they are to me relatively meaningless. I just try to make interesting art. <laughs> okay, now that's that's all for now. Um, goodbye, and see you next time.